our press conference set. You know us right away where we are. Uh, we're in this set because tonight we're doing something very special. This is going to be, very honestly, a freewheeling, ad-lib, off-the-cuff, uh, sort of a press conference question and answer session. Our guest is one of our country's most perceptive wits, America's first angry man, Mort Saul. Hey, hey, hey! Like a used car dealer. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here, Mort. Uh, now, you know, to make this uh, uh, press conference a little more difficult... Yes? Uh, you will be addressed as a famous person, you see? And you've got to answer the uh, question the way you think they might answer it. How's that? Uh, you got that straight I want to clear it with your friend. You think I should do that? I think you should give it a You're try. So uh, President Richard Nixon, uh, would you please explain phase three of your economic game plan? Well, uh... Ms. Elder, I want to make this perfectly clear that... As the first president accused of having three phases... So what do you think will happen if Ronald Reagan becomes president? Well, uh, he's had a tough time. I'd be the last one to say he hasn't had a tough time. Uh, I think it would be, uh, if he became uh, president, I think we could have the wholesale destruction of the University of California, thereby beating the students to it. But uh, if uh, Humphrey had been Nixon's vice president and Agnew had been Johnson's, what difference would it have made? Uh, not a great deal. Uh, this is uh, what American Motors refers to in the assembly of cars as interchangeable parts. <laughs> Although I feel, maybe we shouldn't embrace the level of General Motors. I feel the both uh, vice presidential... <laughs> I'm saying they could have been produced by Mattel. <laughs> what do you think the Democrats need most to win the 1972 election? <laughs> well, I think they should start with a constituency and build. Mayor John Lindsay, what was the real reason you switched from Republican to Democrat? Once it was established in my mind, in all fairness to everyone here concerned, that both parties were the same. <laughs> I felt it wasn't a very long distance to fall. <laughs> to fall straight forward. Uh, Dick Gregory, <laughs> what would happen to Muskie if he ran with a black man? Well, for, before I answer this question, Dick Gregory, I'd like to go on a microbiotic diet. <laughs> As you know, in an effort to stop the war, which I think has been successful, I've been on a diet, and several people have been cooperating by going like this. I'd like you all to go like that as much as you can, by the way, when you pass people in your Volkswagens. Like that. <laughs> That's Miss Elder. Uh, John Wayne, if you were asked to play the part of Sitting Bull in a movie, what would you say? Well, besides the fact that it'd be the first picture in which the Indians have triumphed, <laughs> I, think, uh, I think John Wayne's pictures are uh, important nowadays. They're the only pictures in which there are good guys and bad guys. Most of the pictures, there are a lot of homosexuals in search of therapy. <laughs> you know, I, think that, I don't think homosexuals are looking for a halfway house. <laughs> Mrs. Nixon. <laughs> if you ever joined the women's liberation movement, what would be your first reaction? I'd like to stop the, the jokes in bad taste, such as the joke that during Trisha's wedding that Ralph Nader recalled the cake, or that when he arrived at the wedding, he was followed shortly thereafter by J. Edgar Hoover. Family life. Uh, I think taking the yellow paint off that Mrs. Johnson put in the upstairs was good. That was a step in the right direction. And uh, I, can, uh, I can think of uh, several other things. Oh, one thing I'd like to correct is that the family's not from Whittier. The family's from Yorba Linda. We did go to Whittier on Saturdays. <laughs> Ate at the Taco Bell. <laughs> Went to see a Disney picture. And I think worst of all, enjoyed it. <laughs> yes, a little more serious nature. Let's talk about late night talk shows. Uh, which of the three, uh, Cabot, Griffin, or Carson, do you think's the most intellectual host? <laughs> the most intellectual, according to students, it depends who you talk to. We've got to subdivide this question, ABC is uh, Dick Cavett, who was just picked up for a year. He was a friend of mine and felt great anxiety during which uh, 
the period in which he wondered if ABC would pick him up. And you could find him nightly, you know, pacing up and down under his bed, wondering... <laughs> <laughs>